He was working on a story about the investigation into JFK's assassination, and he was trying to track down a former friend of Lee Harvey Oswald. The name's man, uh, the, sorry, the, the man's name was George D. Monren Schmidt. Now here's, I think I'm getting that wrong, we'll check it. Now here's what he wrote about it in his best-selling book, Killing Kennedy, this is from page 300. It says the reporter traced him to Palm Beach, Florida, and traveled there to confront him. As the reporter knocked on the door of the daughter's home, he heard the shotgun blast that marked the suicide of the Russian, assuring that his relationship with Lee Harvey Oswald would never be fully understood. By the way, that reporter's name is Bill O'Reilly. So that's what O'Reilly wrote in the book, plain and simple right there. O'Reilly says he was outside the guy's house in Florida when he heard the fatal gunshot. And he said basically the same thing on Fox News while promoting his book. But O'Reilly wasn't there. Remarkably, there is an audio tape from that very day of a phone call between O'Reilly and an investigator named Gaetan Fonzi. Fonzi's widow let CNN hear the tape, and it speaks for itself, so listen. Hi, Gaten, Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. Look, something definitely did happen. Yeah, I got it. What is it? He committed suicide up here, here in uh, where, where I was trying to locate him. Okay, where is that? It's a place called uh, uh, Manalapan, M-A-N-A-L-A-P-A-N, Palm Beach County. Okay, so he committed suicide, he's dead. Yeah. Okay, what time? Late this afternoon, I don't okay. know. Okay, gun? I think, yeah, I think he said he shot himself. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? Jesus. Now, we got to get this guy Epstein. I'm coming down there tomorrow. I'm coming to Florida. we got to get this guy. He knows He knows what happened. Well, I'm going to be up there probably trying to secure the papers. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to get in there tomorrow. I'm going to get a car. Is there a number? Will you leave a number at your house where I can be, reach you? Uh, the only way, uh, call, uh, call the magazine. Okay, okay. Now, if... Uh, Okay, I'm going to try to get a night flight out of here if I can, but I, I might have to go tomorrow morning. Um, uh, let me see. So it seems pretty clear. O'Reilly says there, I'm coming to Florida, but in his book, he says he was already there. So how does he explain this? Well, he hasn't, at least not yet. I uh, checked in with Fox News this morning. They referred me to the publisher of the book, which has said uh, repeatedly for the past few days that they stand by O'Reilly. So credit goes to the man who first pointed this out two years ago, and he's here with me in New York this morning. His name is Jefferson Morley, and he's an author and editor of JFKFacts.org. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Brian. So I butchered Jeff's, uh, George's name. Who is George? Tell about the characters in this story. George Dumoran Schilt was a, uh, a, a raconteur, a bon vivant, an international traveler who lived in Dallas mm. and was introduced to Lee and Marina Oswald because he had lived in Minsk as a child, and the Oswalds had lived had just come from Minsk. So he thought they would be interesting. and. DeMoran Schilt and Oswald became friends for a few months um, in the late 1962, early 1963. So when he killed himself, it was a significant story. And O'Reilly, yes. you know, it said he was there. Clearly, this tape shows he was not there. You found this tape a couple years ago. Uh, you received it from, from the family. Right. And you contacted Fox about it? Yeah. And what happened? No answer. Hmm. So you basically then they ignored it? Yeah. I mean, when, 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 I heard the, when I read the book, I thought, that doesn't sound right. I knew other reporters had been there, and I checked the books, mm -hmm. and then I checked Gaten Fonzie's book, and he said the story that's on the tape, right. that he had received a phone call from O'Reilly that night. So then I had a guy, you know, who wrote a book 20 years ago versus Bill O'Reilly, and I just didn't think it was a story. Mm -hmm. Then I met Marie Fonzie, and she said, can you believe what Bill O'Reilly wrote in his book? And I said, yeah, that's not right, is it? She said, I know it's not right. Gaten has the tape. And I said, Gaten has the tape? She said, yeah, Gaten taped all his conversations. I have a tape of that conversation. That's when I did the story. Right, so you published a, a, a kind of a lower quality version of the recording. We were able to get this higher quality yeah. version so we make sure we hear the words correctly. It's pretty clear he says he's gonna come to Florida, which indicates he wasn't there at the time. Do you think this matters that much though for Bill O'Reilly? You know, uh, he's an entertainer. He's popular because of his point of view, but a lot of people listen to him and a lot of people take what he's saying on, you know, on faith. And I think, especially on something like this, Bill O'Reilly did not hear a gunshot from 1,200 miles away. You know, he made this story up.